Hello, Soundies. It's good to have you here today. Welcome. Today's the 25th of September, 2022. It's good to have you here. I'm operating solo today. Danny had another commitment, so uh, I'm doing everything. The switching, working the chat here, um, and we'll be presenting as well. So with that, let's go ahead and switch on over to our agenda for today. Oh, I got the wrong date. Forgot to update that bit. <laughs> update that bit. So you can see I reuse these, um, but I update them except for the date in this case. Nevertheless, today we'll be talking about Isotope RX Spectral Repair in particular, but we'll also use some other tools within RX. Uh, one question came up from Philip in the chat, and the um, I'm using RX 10, but everything we show today, I believe. I don't think we're going to show anything that's new or unique to RX-10. It still all applies in RX-9. And in fact, uh, with the spectral repair, that goes back several versions. So we're not doing anything that's super, super RX-10 um, exclusive today. So don't, don't worry about that. There's still some things to be learned here. And that can certainly apply to the existing, um, your RX-9 and, and probably well into the, you know, <laughs> back from that as well. Uh, we also had a question that was submitted ahead of time, and then, of course, we'll turn to the chat. And then we also have a surprise package that uh, that, that showed up. Um, I'd have no idea what's in it. It came from Sound Speeds. We'll open that up at the end. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and let me get things queued up here for looking at RX. We're, uh, Derek was kind enough to send over a an audio clip. Um that we're going to use today and let me just make sure we have everything queued up in the right way here okay we're going to go ahead and switch over to the mac and there we go okay so we're in rx here we're in the audio editor and let me just play a little bit of where we're starting from today i'm going to go ahead and switch to this tool what is this line here oh, i'm going to turn that off for now we have a marker I don't know why that marker's there. Okay, this is just to give you a sense for where we're starting today. But some common techniques to avoid probate could wind up costing you or your survivors even more if the plan goes awry. Adding children. Okay, and then we also have this very uh, talkative bird. And remember that the home. Do you hear that there? And remember that the home will be exposed to the... Okay. Now, Derek didn't tell me all the details on this, but I believe this is audio that goes along with the video. So we do have plenty of sort of ambient noise. There's at, at some points here, I think it was... Uh, was it here? I'm going to scroll around. Oh, right here for sure. We've got a vehicle that sort of accelerates. Let's go ahead and play that. Here in Ontario where probate fees can be levied on estates. Avoiding that tax is usually an initial goal. With the okay. Actually, this is not a horrible clip. I mean, if the video is showing the person who's narrating here outdoors, I think most people are going to expect to hear some ambient noise, so that's not terribly surprising. Um, but here's how I would generally approach it. Now, um, we are in spectral view here, so there's waveform view, of course. You just move the slider over to the right here to get our spectral view. And what we're going to do is spend most of our time here in not spectral recovery. <laughs> that one actually, there is some additional features there in the RX-10 version, one of the few new features actually. Um, but we're going to come over here into spectral repair. And spectral repair has four different modes in which it can operate. And the idea, just to kind of set the stage here, is spectral repair in many ways is, I guess you can think of it like, you know how people use Photoshop to repair things, to repair photos, retouch photos. Um, in some respects, I think spectral repair can be viewed as that for audio to some extent, not a perfect analogy or metaphor, but um, it's somewhat similar to that. So for example, let's go take a look at that. Where is that bird again? The bird was right here. Um, Order of operations. I know people are going to ask about this as well. Generally, what I would recommend, we're here in the initial state. I did some experimenting here beforehand, but we're in the initial state. So this is the, the raw file that was sent over by Derek. Um, 
I'm not going to do, I mean, I think tr traditionally what people would do and what I did actually traditionally was I applied a high pass and it looks like there's actually already been a high pass applied during the recording itself or perhaps afterwards, but most likely during the recording. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave all of that there because I'm going to do a final pass of noise reduction at the end and we might use, we can, we can do a couple of different things. We can do the voice denoise or we can do spectral denoise or we can do dialogue isolate. There are lots of different options here depending on what we want as our final, um, our final sound. So in any case, let's go in and take a look at the bird here and see what we can do about this. So if I zoom well in here, and I'm going to get this tool right here. This allows me to select a, basically a square right around the part that I want to clean up. I'm pretty sure that's the bird. Let's go ahead and highlight it. And let's play through that and see what we get here. Putting my headphones on. That's the bird. Got it. Okay, so there are four different modes that we can use here. And I will say that for doing this, the type of work that we're going to do here, typically, depending on what my, I want to accomplish, I either want to attenuate. So if we want to keep the bird but just make it less prominent, we would use attenuate. If I want to replace it, in other words, I want the bird, <laughs> the bird sound to disappear, I don't want it anymore, we could use the replace. Pattern is going to be probably mm, for more, when you have a consistent sound that goes over and over and over again, um, this is essentially for, for taking care of those situations. And then this is the most advanced mode here called partials plus noise. And in fact, if we come over and take a look here, um, I'm going to scroll down here. So if you are motion sensitive, go ahead and turn your eyes away for just a moment here. Just to describe this partials and noise, the advanced version of, re this is the advanced version of replace mode. Um, it restores harmonics of the audio more accurately with control over the harmonic sensitivity parameter. This mode allows for higher quality interpolation by explicit location of signal harmonics from the two sides of the corrupted interval and linking them together by synthesis. So this is actually resynthesizing uh, sound. It's, it's creating new sound in place of what you're trying to remove or clean up or replace. And so just just keep that in mind. So we're we're doing some <laughs> this is getting a, a fair bit more advanced. I'm not sure that we're going to necessarily use this. We'll experiment with partials and noise. I don't know if it's going to apply really well to anything we're going to look at today, but um, here for example, it says partials plus noise is able to correctly interpolate ca uh, cases of pitch modulation including vibrato. The remaining of non-harmonic material is interpolated using the replace method. So it kind of combines a couple of things there. Again, that's going to probably be more likely when you're resynthesizing voice, perhaps. Um, maybe singing, and you have something funny going on during the singing recording. Maybe you had a really good take, but for whatever reason, there was some noise or someone bumped a microphone stand or something like that. So that's the idea. But let's go with a more straightforward example first here. I'm going to try and... There are a couple different ways we could do this. We can attenuate the bird or we can replace. So attenuate is just bringing the level of the bird down some. And we have a variety of controls that we'll look at in just a minute. But I'm going to go, I'm going to go with replace. I think replace is, um, there are times when we want to just utterly remove something from a recording. And I'm just going to use this as an example. I'm not saying that replacing the bird necessarily would be the, the right choice. There's a creative decision here as well. Again, if there's a bird sitting in the background, <laughs> maybe you still want the sound of the bird. You just don't want it to be so loud. So that's what this is all about. Okay, one other note too. Um, let's just talk about what these settings mean. So we have bands and multi-resolution. Multi-resolution is just an on-off. Bands, you have a variety of different choices. You can choose very few bands or you can choose more bands. Um, 128 is the lowest setting. And the general idea here is that you generally, for things that happen very quickly, you typically want fewer bands, and for something that's more sustained, more bands. And let's just take a look at the documentation. Again, I'm going to move back up here. Um, here we are in Attenuate, coming down to the controls. On bands, this selects a number of frequency bands used for interpolation. A higher number of bands can provide better frequency resolution, but also requires wider surrounding area to be analyzed for interpretation, interpolation, excuse me. And a lower number of bands is ideal for processing short selections or transient signals. So if we come back over here, 
you'll notice here when I set this to 128, you can see there's this bar off to the side. So I've, the, the highlighted part is right here, and then there's this bar off to the side indicating where it's going to actually read sound and use that to create and replace this sound within the selected area. Okay, so if I change this from 128 to 4096, you can see it's going to get a much larger area. Okay, so this is... Um, you can only use more bands <laughs> if you have an area that has acceptable stuff. If there was some dialogue here, we probably wouldn't want to use that many bands. And that's why using fewer bands is really helpful in cases where you have just a really quick noise that you want to remove. Um, so that's the idea here. We're in a good situation where we can actually choose more. And in fact, we can also increase that size even more by changing the surrounding region length percent. So we don't want to go over here. We have something else going on, probably the end of the previous dialogue line. Um, but so we, want to go, we don't want to go that far. Um, so we can choose. I think the default here is normally 100. So let's start there. You also have this before and after waiting. You can tell it where to look for the sound. Now, here's something that's interesting is that there's a bar on the other side too. So it is going to read some of the sound from the other side. And the problem is that's when our narrator starts talking. So this could be problematic. So we may not want to use that many bands. You can see if I shrink the number of bands, it's not going to read out after as much, and it's not going to start looking to that dialogue to replace this. So that may be something we need to look at. But you also have this before and after waiting. If I want to get most everything from before, like we do in this case, I would move this slider to before, and you can see how that little selected, or that area where it's going to do the reading moved over to the left as opposed to the right. Here we would not want to do this because, again, the dialogue starts there. We're not, we don't want to read that and replace the bird with dialogue. We want to replace the, the bird with ambient noise. So let's go ahead and try this. Oh yeah, multi-resolution. Let's also look at that before we move on. Multi-resolution mode allows for better frequency resolution for the interpolation of low frequency content and better time resolution for the interpolation of high frequency content. So let's go ahead and leave that on. And we can try it with both with it and without it and see if we hear a difference in this case. So let's go ahead and render and listen. Okay. Select over here. Let's play. And remember, just to undo that. And remember, did pretty well. If I go to my history, let's go ahead and apply that again. And remember that. So. That's how you can remove the bird <laughs> altogether. But let me undo that, and let's just go ahead and say, what if I wanted to... Um, let's see here. Is there a way to just even fill that with silence? Uh, I don't think there is. What you never want to do, of course, is just literally cut like this. Let's go ahead and listen to that. And remember, it's like it's like some of the ambience just falls out for half a second, and it's it sounds fake. It sounds like somebody's done something. That's why it's so important to use something like spectral repair instead. So let's turn off multi-resolution and see if that makes any difference in this case. Listening back again. And remember that the. Hmm. I heard a little distortion on the start of his voice. Let's try that again. And remember that the home will be exposed to the financial... Now, sounds about the same. I didn't hear a massive difference, but that's about how I would approach, in this case, for example, removing the bird. <laughs> Let's head back over here, again, where we had this vehicle. Um, move this over just a touch. Let's go ahead and play through this again. It's some low-frequency content here. Listen for the, the vehicle in the background. Here in Ontario, where probate fees can be levied on estates. Avoiding that tax is usually an initial goal. Without an alternate... Okay. Kind of blends into the overall ambience, but it's definitely there, there, and you can see it in the trace right here, down at the bottom. We also have another, looks like a harmonic of that right here. Now that's going to be way trickier because that's, it's just, it overlaps all the dialogue um, in the lower registers of his voice. Now, we could, of course, apply a high-pass filter, but that's going to cut into those fundamentals and it's going to sound awful. So here, for example, let's go ahead and highlight this. 
right here. Let's just do something crazy. This is what you should not do. <laughs> Let's go and turn, yeah, actually turn that high pass on. And let's move it, uh, whoops, I'm in the wrong one. Let's move that up to just above 200 hertz. Render it. Okay, so it took a lot of that away. Get this out of the way so you can see it again. There we go. Listen, now we got, we probably got that vehicle taken care of and a lot of the ambience, but listen to what it sounds like now. Here in Ontario, where probate fees can be levied on estates, Avoiding that tax is usually an initial goal. Without a Nope. Really obvious that we did something there, cutting, against, as I mentioned, into the fundamentals. Obviously not something we can do realistically. So let's get our brush tool here. And with the brush tool, what we need to do is get the right size. Uh, and you can change the size of the brush tool by pressing and holding on the brush. And you get this little pop-up here. And you can change the size and then just check it by moving your pointer up there. Don't need it that big. That looks about right. Yeah, that looks about right. So we'll click on there again, and I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight this here, being careful not to cut into the fundamentals of the voice, which you can see in the, tr in the uh, trace there, spectral trace. Okay, good. All right, now in this case, we can attenuate, we can replace, we can try partials plus noise. I'm gonna bet that replace is probably gonna be the one that's gonna work the best for us. In this case, we can probably choose a larger um, period and we can probably get some from before and after. I'm cutting in a little bit right there. That might be interesting, we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and try that and see what happens. So let's render. Okay, and then it looks better. Let's hear it. Here in Ontario, where probate fees can be levied on estates, avoiding that tax is usually an initial goal. Without Okay, made a tiny bit of a difference, but I'm still very much hearing that vehicle here, and I think you're still seeing that trace. Again, it's probably closer to the 200 hertz range. Here's the problem. If I try to do that... In here, let's go ahead and get our brush tool again. Let's see what we can do here. Can I zoom in a little when selecting? I can. Here, Oops. stand by. Select a little bit more there and there. Let's try attenuation here. Oops, see that? Here's another thing too. To select multiple, you have to select one and hold down the shift key. Select another, another, another. The trick is, is that this is all happening interspersed with the dialogue. So anything that happens here, any cases where we don't attenuate it, where there is dialogue, it's gonna sound well, the dialogue is still going is the problem. So this is the tricky, tricky bit where I don't think We're gonna have to go, whoops. And then I can also subtract by holding down, in this case on a Mac, an option key. And I can say, you know what? Don't get that dialog right there. And then back to shift to fill that in. Okay, so there we have selected all of that. If I, let's try first replace. So just try it and let's play that back here in ontario where probate fees can be levied on estates avoiding that tax is usually an initial goal no i don't think that made it better undo let's go to attenuate you can bump up the number of bands to give us more selection area. You can see it is selecting an area on the outsides of where we've selected. So this is the area it's going to use to read and use that um, as a read of noise or of um, surrounding area. And you can actually choose it to, cho to look at the vertical area as well. Obviously that doesn't make sense here with dialogue. 
but we're just going to look to the left and the right. And we're, we've got multi-resolution on. We can choose the strength, which is how much it attenuates or reduces the overall level. And we can tell it whether to look at the start or the end, just like on the other one. Let's go ahead and render this and see how this sounds. And select and see if that sounds any different. Here in Ontario, where probate fees can be levied on estates, avoiding that tax is usually an initial goal. And before. Here in Ontario, where probate fees can be levied on estates, avoiding that tax is usually an initial goal. Yeah, I don't know that either of those are gonna really do what we need it to do. So I'm actually gonna leave that for our noise reduction and we'll take care of that then. I wanted to, um, there's another one here, whoops. Uh, let's reset this, zoom out full, there we go. I'm gonna take a look over here. There was a thing I wanted to look at. Where did it go? Get rid of spectral repair for just a minute here. Sometimes mouth clicks, there's the D-click tools, of course, but sometimes spectral repair can be useful for mouth clicks as well, depending on what you're getting. And I thought there was a pretty substantial mouth click over here somewhere. Maybe this is it. Let's take a listen right here. But expect tax. Nope, that's not it. Nope. There it is. This is one of those uh, situations that uh, some of you may, some voices do this, some don't. When someone takes a breath in, they get this sort of kind of clicking noise, this. I'm um, sorry, <laughs> but this can be, uh, spectral repair can be really useful for that as well. And so this is a really simple one. It's pretty broadband. You'll notice there's some trace even up here into the higher frequencies. And this one's pretty straightforward. We could do something like this open up that spectral repair again, just as a something to uh, practice on. I'm going to go ahead and replace this, I think. You could attenuate it or replace it. I don't think we need that many bands. This is a definitely a transient. And I don't think we need to extend this. And we probably want to look before because the breath comes right after. So let's just go ahead and try that and see what we get. Listen to what it sounds like now. What about selling? Now we just have the breath. So that's another option there as well. If you wanted to get in and really, really clean things up quite a bit. Now there is also a bird that occurs or that makes some noise um, a little bit earlier here. I think right in this area right here. This is during some dialogue. Let's go ahead and play that back so you can hear where we're starting from and what our options are here. 700,000 could be nearly $10,000. Okay, right while he's talking. Could be nearly $10,000. Okay, here's the trace for those right here and here. And you can see, of course, his dialogue overlaps that as well. Now, here's something, if we go to the square selection tool and I just select, say for example, the second time the bird makes its noise, if I just do this, um, let's go ahead and replace with a bit before. Let me play that back now and let's see what it sounds like. $10,000. Do you hear his voice? It cuts, it's cutting very much into his voice. So all the high frequency content of his voice disappears <laughs> during that second one. Could be nearly $10,000. You hear that? So don't want to do that unless we used spectral repair, or sorry, recovery right here. Now this one, 
is new in, uh, well, this one's actually updated in RX-10. It exists in RX-9 as well. Um, and I have not practiced using this, but that's the next uh, kind of lesson for me to, to, to work on, is to figure out, hey, is there some way I can use this to then resynthesize that high frequency content, which would be really interesting here. So let's just try it. Well, actually, let's learn first. We'll learn over here. Okay, and then I'll put it right here and turn that off. And let's try to render that. No, I don't think that's gonna happen. Oh, wait, did it? I don't think it did anything. This will be one we come back to. $10,000. No, there's a, there's a lot more to learn in terms of how to approach this, but here's the problem. So when you have birds and overlapping or any sort of noise and overlapping, um, noise that you're trying to remove, you have to be really careful because it's going to affect the overall dialogue. And I think this is really kind of the next frontier of audio processing is being able to reconstruct that, you know, somebody's voice when you do have to remove a noise like that. So this would be a case where we'd probably need to go ahead and leave it. I could, um, you know, we could Probably if I come in carefully here, the problem is, is if I get this bit here, try not to get any of the voice. It's just, um, it just doesn't sound natural. So not spectral recovery. I got the wrong one. Let's go back and get spectral repair again. There it is. And maybe a little bit less. Listen to what that does. Nearly ten thousand dollars. Hmm. Nearly ten thousand dollars. There's something there. Nearly ten thousand hmm. dollars. Yeah, I mean, there comes a point where you probably just need to embrace it. <laughs> um, this one is be one where I probably wouldn't try to get in there too heavily and, and take care of all that. But the question is, what would I do for the rest of it? Like, there's plenty of ambiance here, and that's where you can approach this a variety of different ways. You could go with voice denoise, you could go with spectral denoise, and you could go with uh, dialogue isolate, it, depending on which version you have. So if you have the elements version, you'll have this, this denoiser here. If you've got the standard version, I believe you get spectral denoise and the advanced version, and then the advanced, I think it's only the advanced version that has dialogue isolate. This is probably the simplest and most straightforward, um, but let's try each of them and see what we get here. So let's try first with and I would actually, before you do any sort of high pass filter, I would do the denoising first. And my kind of my general approach here is that for with the voice denoiser, I would generally put it in adaptive mode. You can you can uncheck it and learn the noise print yourself if you wanted to do that. Um, but I like something that adapts throughout the course because the ambiance is changing. You've got vehicles driving by and things like that. So I think the adaptive mode is probably the better choice. Um, you can optimize, of course, in this case for dialogue, and we can use a gentle filter type. I typically start with a threshold and just leave, almost always leave it at zero, but I use the reduction, and I usually don't try to do more than 6 dB of reduction per pass. If I, if I need a lot of noise reduction, I'll do multiple passes with 6 dB or less um, of, a t of reduction each time. Um, it just gives it a chance to remove some of that and then come back and reevaluate what's there to use its algorithm to reduce what's next. So generally my approach there. So let's go ahead and preview here and I'll, I'll press bypass while we're going. So watch for the bypass. The bypass means we've turned off the noise reduction. And then when I turn the bypass off, we're doing the noise reduction. So this is what that sounds like. But some common techniques to avoid probate could wind up costing you or your survivors, even more if the plan goes awry. Adding children to a property's title early is one way to avoid probate on that part of the estate. But expect tax implications for them if they later choose to sell and the home is not their primary residence. Okay. So that would work pretty well. I think it's doing a pretty nice job of, again, putting that ambiance behind the, the dialogue 
in a way that's still present and obviously it needs to be there if the person's outdoors i think to some extent otherwise it feels like they're on mars or and they're or there's it'll, <laughs> it'll give them more of the impression that they're in front of a green screen if you don't leave a little bit of it there i think to give it context um, but that's one way to approach it if you were to use voice denoise for those using i believe the elements version now there is also the spectral denoise this one um also has an adaptive mode and you can tell it you know how far ahead to look to look um basically um the kind of i guess the window it uses to look at noise to learn the noise print and be able to reduce it from there um you have different quality modes here and if you look at the documentation for this uh, let me just switch back over to that so this is going to be spectral denoise which is right here this is designed to remove stationary or slowly changing tonal noise and broadband hiss by learning a profile um, Anyway, so let's let's go ahead and let's experiment with that one and see what we get here. So we have different types of quality. This one that you know the best takes more processing power, it's more sophisticated. You can go down to slower if you need to do something that's basically live, if you're doing a live stream or something and you're applying some processing like this. But uh, for post, we would probably generally set it to next or best, excuse me. Um, artifact control. So the more you move to the right, the more it's going to be a gating sort of effect. And the more you move to the, less, the left, the more it's going to sound a bit more like musical noise. Or um, It's going to give it, a, I guess, a, I want to say smear, but that's a bad term to use because some people might interpret that the wrong way. But it sort of smears it a little bit as opposed to um, gating, which is, has this very, can have this very abrupt sound to it. But that's the default setting. Let's go ahead and try this and see what we get. But some common techniques to avoid probate could wind up costing you or your survivors even more if the plan goes awry. This is sounding fairly distorted to me. Let's use this one instead. But some common techniques to avoid probate could wind up costing you or your survivors even more if the plan goes awry. Adding children to a property's title early is one way to avoid probate on that part of the estate. But expect tax implications for them if they later choose to sell and the home is not their primary residence. Okay. So um, once we move back to the C algorithm uh, or the quality, um, these are different algorithms, incidentally. Um, the C algorithm sounded a little bit more transparent. D was just a little much in this particular case. We could have maybe backed off this artifact control as well. But in essence, you have more control over this one to really fine tune it. Um, and I think a lot of people really like this version or this type of denoising, uh, again, just because you have more control. All right, let's go ahead and try dialogue isolate to give an illustration of what that's like so this one's a little bit simpler this one's approaching things differently instead of actually um, let me just come back over here actually over here just to give it an explanation dialogue isolate is using a different it's using machine learning and so it is the machine learning is given a bunch of different samples audio samples with different types of noise in it and it uses that to be able to identify what's dialogue and what's not dialogue. And then with this, as we come back over here to the Mac, you can see we have settings for, we can choose how much we want to boost or cut the dialogue. Obviously we want to generally leave that as it is. How much we want to take that noise element that the machine learning has identified and reduce that. And you can reduce it all the way to minus infinity. Um, typically I wouldn't do quite that much. Um, you can also tell it how sensitive to be in terms of identifying the distinction between dialogue and noise. And then you can also tell it to preserve some of the ambiance. And then, of course, you can change the algorithm as a good or best setting. We'll typically leave that at best. So with 6 dB of attenuation, we're going to go ahead and leave the sensitivity at its default dialogue. We don't want to boost or attenuate that, so we'll leave that at zero. Let's see what this one does.
but some common techniques to avoid probate could wind up costing you or your survivors even more if the plan goes awry. Adding children to a property's title early is one way to avoid probate on that part of the estate. But expect tax implications for them if they later choose to sell and the home is not their primary residence. And remember that the home... Let's see if we can get that just as an experiment. Let's go ahead and turn the noise gain to in minus infinity. So we're getting, we're obliterating the noise in essence. I want to see if it actually does anything for the bird. I don't think it will, but let's try. But some common techniques to avoid probate could wind up costing you or your survivors even more if the plan goes awry. Adding children to a property's title early is one way to avoid probate on that part of the estate. But expect tax implications for them if they later choose to sell and the home is not their primary residence. And remember that the home will be exposed to the financial situation of... Wow. <laughs> if you wanted it to sound like the studio, even though the person is not in the studio, there's a way to do it. And Dialogue Isolated, it actually seems like it did take care of the bird pretty nicely. So there is a way you can do that as well. Again, this one's only in the advanced advanced version, as I understand it. So with that, let's go back and take a look at the chat and see what we've got going here. I'm going to be uh, looking at things here. I'm going to scroll back a little ways here. Oh, hi, uh, <laughs> Mark. Uh, good to have you here. And sorry, I accidentally clicked that again. All right. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, first question, will this be beginner level? I know Isotope RX, but I've never learned to spectral noise cleanup. I hope that was at a pretty good level there. I think it was. All right. All right. Bird is the word, indeed. <laughs> uh, can you zoom in a little while selecting? I can I can zoom in vertically, but I can't like zoom the whole screen in based on the tools that I have. Let me just show you what I have here. Um, this is just using the scroll wheel on my mouse, so I can I can sorry zoom in horizontally. Um, good question, though. I mean, just as a as a matter of. There, I think you were asking, hey, I can't see it very well. Can you zoom in? And yeah, if you're on your phone or something like that, it's going to be hard. But I can zoom in in the tool horizontally. I didn't have any sort of screen zoom to, to make it easier for the live stream. Um, we just dropped the resolution to 1080p and, and took it from there. So um, hopefully that gives you a little context here. And Camille, thanks so much for the, for two cappuccinos. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, then we had some of my breathing ASMR. Sorry about that. Um, all right, here's a good one from Shoji. How do you manage the amount of time spent on repairing an audio file? Great demo, but it seems like you can get buried in endlessly spending time on the repair of a file. Absolutely, and this is a great example of that. I think, you. I mean, it depends on the budget that you're working with. And if you don't have the budget to be doing this, then you shouldn't be doing it. In, in other words, if you are not getting paid to do this, um, then you have to make a choice, like how how valuable is it to you to have the perfect audio um, relative to the amount of time you're going to spend on it. So, I've I've all I think we all tr kind of struggle with that as creatives and as um, you know mixers or post production mixers or whatever we each do is deciding how much time to spend on a project and what's realistic. Because the re reality is, if if you go in you could spend forever and you could never ship anything. And that's, that's not really great either. <laughs> so there is a, there's obviously a balance. And I think you have to decide for yourself what that is. If you're working professionally, it's largely a budget question. Like how much do you have to spend on this? And what are your, what are the goal, what are the client's goals? Or, um, and that's what you just have to decide. So it's a, it's a practical question. It's a very good practical question. <clears throat> Um, Dialog Isolate is amazing. It's true. It is pretty amazing. Uh, does workflow question, does RX have a marker feature, i.e. I, I, the first listen and mark all things that need fixing, ideally colored markers, red, green, 
fixed. Let's take a look. Um, there is a marker feature. I don't use it extensively, but um, there you can put a marker on there. Uh, can you, you just marker and remove marker? Uh, I think, can you rename it? I can't. This is a feature I haven't used a lot, but you can put them on here. I just don't know if you can do a lot to change them. Let's just see if there's any way to, like an index of markers. I don't see that. I don't know if anyone else knows, but um, it does have a marker feature. It doesn't look like it's particularly sophisticated um, in terms of being able to change the colors and leave notes like you can in some other things, but um, you can add them and remove them, basically. It's a good question, Cosmic 040. Bye-bye, uh, Birdie. <laughs> Um, uh, Larry, the guy from Michigan, very useful as I just upgraded to RX 10 standard. Yes, I think everything except for dialogue isolate should be available to you there. I wonder if you could select the fundamental vocal frequencies and boost those. What would happen if you reduced everything back down into range after, would it sound weird? Um, it, ah, good question. Alan, so you're basically going the other way. Instead of trying to attenuate the noise, you want to boost the fundamental vo vocal frequencies, boost it up. But the problem is, if you just boost the fundamental vocal frequencies, that could sound weird too. Like if you boosted those and then brought everything back down, then the, high fr the higher frequencies, the non-fundamentals, would be attenu in essence attenuated as well. Hmm. That's a good experimental question. Um, I don't think we're going to do that right now, but it is a very interesting question that may be able, may be um, interesting to experiment with here. Um, okay, so we have some other questions. Looks like we're getting away from, looks like we're getting off to, off to other topics here. Uh, let's see what happens here. So let, let's let's answer these in, in turn here. So first, Andrew asks, I have a mix pre-2 for a two-person per interview. What is the best way to set the levels to get minus 10 dB final mix? The ISO channels record at a lower level of the left-right mix. Is that normal? Um, the ISO channels record at a lower level. Okay, so Andrew, it depends partly on whether the people are talking over each other. If they're not talking over each other, then you'd want to optimize each ISO, each each input channel for about minus 10 dB. So if they're talking over each other a lot, that's where you'd need to um, you'd need to fade them back a little bit. So you use a fader to fade them back to get your overall mix at about minus 10 dB. But if they're not talking over each other very much, then you would aim each of their individual, you know, when you, when you gain stage them, you'd aim for about minus 10 dB. And as long as they're not talking over each other at the same time, in other words, when I, that's what I mean when I say talking over each other, then you should be pretty close to minus 10 dB overall. You want to be careful if it's, if it's a type of situation where they do talk over each other just a little bit, um, you're always at risk of potentially clipping in those circumstances. So what I might do is actually aim for my total, you know, my peak levels of the mix somewhere closer to minus 15. Just give yourself a little bit more headroom. You can always boost it in post um, to get it to minus 10, but... <clears throat> Those are some of my thoughts there. All right, what's the best plugin for dialog? EQ, compressor, denoise, DS. That's a lot like asking, what's the best car? There is no answer to that question. Maybe for an individual, for a particular purpose, there's an answer to that question, but there's no universal answer to that question. So my answer to you, Risha Tech, is all of them. <laughs> If you need a de-esser, then you need a de-esser. If you need EQ, and they're not mutually exclusive, so that's the good news. You can use all of them. All right, Christopher asks, what about double-clicking on the marker? Let's go try that again. So M for marker one. Pro, pro. Double-click, double-click, middle-click, right-click, nothing. Right click gives me remove marker. That's the only thing I get there. So we'll have to look into that more, but I don't see anything else there. 
Okay, let's run back to the start. There were some questions earlier. Bartek had a question here. Sorry for off topic. Could you say something about proper positioning MKH8050 for talking head videos for YouTube according to the polar pattern chart, which is on official Sennheiser page? Let's go take a look at that. So if we look at the polar pattern, it's a super cardioid polar pattern. And you can see we have different traces. So different frequencies respond a little differently. When you get up to the much higher frequencies, um, it attenuates more of those at the rear of the microphone. And it actually falls off pretty quickly at the side even. That's very high frequency, 32,000 hertz. At 16 kilohertz, it's barely even. And that's one of the kind of the nice things about the 8050 is that even at 16 kilohertz, the pattern is different. It definitely falls off more on the sides at 90 degrees um, and at the back, but it's not... It's not too different and anything below 2000 hertz is very consistent so in any case so it's a super cardioid polar pattern so in terms of positioning bartek it's just like any other boom mic i mean if i were going to use it here this is in front of my face i would position it just about right there so it's essentially a bubble its pickup is a bubble here and so as i was talking it would be able to pick me up just right here so i would aim it down you can tune it so you can aim it directly at the mouth maybe if the person has, uh, you can maybe change the aim just a little bit, maybe down more towards the chest if you need a little bit more weight to the voice based on the, the timbre of that person's voice, how they sound. Um, but you can tune it using that. In fact, that's what boom operators do. Uh, if Alan is still here, I'm sure he'll attest to the fact that he's constantly very using a lot of nuance to tune the microphone and its aim to change the overall response. So if you aim more towards the chest, you're gonna get a little bit more bassy response. If you tune more towards the mouth, you're gonna get a brighter response. Um, so overall, that's the, that's the main idea. That's with the 8050 and any other microphone as well. Okay, heading back on down. Uh, you could use markers in another DAW or on another DAW and work with the RX modules there probably. Most of them are available, not all of them, um, but most of them are available in other DAWs as well. So that is a, that's a valid point there. Can you unmix component like in spectral layers? Um, I don't know. Uh, there is a, well, there, well, I can answer that actually to some extent. I don't know if this is what you're asking exactly, Renee, but um, there is, coming back over here, um, 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 where is it? It's a de. I think it's a deconstruct. No. I think it may be the center extract. No. There is one that's used sometimes in music to break apart different instruments. I'm trying to remember which one it is. Is it the interpolate? No. Music rebalance is the one I was thinking of here. So there is this. And the idea with this is that you it will be able to identify the vocal and break out the bass, percussion, and other. And you can tune how much of each of those you want to keep. And you can have a little slider here for telling you essentially how, how much separation you want. A couple different quality settings or three different quality settings. Um, I, I don't know if that's what you're asking about, but that is one thing you can do there. Okay. The markers and regions list is under the window menu in RX. Thank you for that. And this might give us the flexibility we're looking for. Let's go ahead and try it. So I'm going to switch back over here. We're going to go here to markers and regions. Ah, yes, we do have this. You can leave a comment. It'll tell you the. we can choose a region and make it an advisor a with TD Wealth you can Private play it. Invest. An advisor with Stop. TD Wealth. Um, you can export the marker file, you can import a marker file. This is pretty cool, actually. I don't see any way, is there a way to change the color? You can change the names. I don't see a way to change the colors though. Good, thanks for that, Alexander, appreciate that. Really good to know. So you do have a little bit more flexibility with those. Um, how well does RX work with other languages? I use it for cleaning other languages too, but felt it works better on English. Hmm, interesting. I don't know. 
Um, I have always worked with English on it, so I'm not sure how well it works with other languages. Um, the company, of course, is based in Boston, U.S., uh, so I, I imagine most of their testing is with English files. Uh, other languages do have probably different mixes of, of different sounds that they make uh, when people speak it, so it could be that it's different. But I would I would think you could use you could do it for it would be helpful for most. I'm not sure, but uh, eternal. When do you use a compressor on dialogue? Do you use it sort of like a normalizer or? Um, usually for normalization, I'll do a passive compression. Depends on the piece. Um, for podcasts and for online content, obviously, well, not obviously, you, I, I typically have to compress a little bit more because we're usually aiming for higher loudness standards. So I need to pull some of those, the, the larger amplitude things down so I have enough room to normalize and bring the overall levels up. Um, but you also sometimes need to use a compressor for other things too, if you just want to, to change the timbre of the voice, if you want something that's really weighty, um, compression can help with that. So for podcasts, so same thing, you're, you're kind of usually targeting a, you know, I usually target minus 16 LUFS, so typically I have to use it to manage transients. I try, in that case, to use it to, in a way that it doesn't affect the sound, that it does, it's pretty transparent, because um, I don't want the sound to change tremendously, I just want it to sound like a natural person speaking, but I do want it to be loud enough to be heard on earbuds in an airplane, <laughs> or you know, in a subway or whatever. So that's my general approach to that. Uh, Larry, the guy from Michigan says, under window, there is more you can do with the markers, I think. Well, let's take a look. Window, we have markers and regions. Don't see anything else that would be directly related to that. So that's what we looked at before. Maybe I'm getting to your comment a little bit late, but Thanks for that, Larry. All right. Thomas asks, do you find the noise removal is equally good at removing room tone and analog to digital converter hiss, or will you need to spend more attention addressing one of those sources? Well, it depends on the, it depends on the, well, which, which module you're using, first of all. Um, they take very different approaches. So, for example, the voice denoise is basically a bunch of gates at different frequencies. I think there are 64 of them, something like that. And so it's actually working in between, literally in between, um, over the course of milliseconds, it's, it's actually gating really actively. It's doing, I mean, if you could visualize it, I think it's, it's doing a ton of work, even between every single letter, every phrase, every every syllable, it's actually doing work to remove the noise in between all of those. So that's that's how, I, from my understanding, that's how the voice denoise works. Um, spectral denoise, I think, is doing something similar, um, but you have a little bit more control over it. And then the dialogue isolate, I think, is working a little bit differently. It's using those that, that machine learning to figure out what's voice and what's not, and then... Um, and I don't know, I don't know what that looks like. I'd, obviously, I don't think that Isotope necessarily wants us to know exactly what that looks like either. Um, but that's how that's it, it's taking a different approach altogether. So I think in my to answer your question, Thomas, I think it's I think they all do pretty well. I think Dialogue Isolate in particular seems to do really well at both analog to digital converter hiss and room tone is my is my read on it. So. All right, Alexander, thank you for the info on markers. Yes, very much appreciated. Matt says, I use a compressor during recording on all dialogue, especially on LAVs. Normally I use LAVs and a shotgun, so I have two sources and options in post if needed. Um, interesting. No, I don't, uh, well, it depends on what you're doing. Again, if you're doing live to tape, as they call them, uh, nobody, I, hardly anyone uses tape anymore, but <laughs> um, live to tape, um, then yeah, you may need to use a compressor even on the lavalier microphones there. I think typically in production sound, we will have, uh, well, sorry, limiters on everything, 
there as sort of a safety net, but probably not doing a lot of compression necessarily. Um, so anyway, that's interesting. Matt. I don't, I don't know if there's more context to that. Are you doing like sound reinforcement during a live show? And in that case, I think a compressor probably does make sense potentially. Um, cool. All right. Christopher asks, maybe dialogue isolate the tech they licensed from Cedar Audio. Maybe could be, I don't know if that's the case or not, but, uh, it's a possibility. Compressors are like your wife listening to music. The thresh. Oh, good grief. I don't know if we need, if this is appropriate to read here. This is a tweet that, uh, Alan made recently. Um, Eternal, do you use dehum a lot? I sometimes find it sounding kind of metallic, metallic when used. Um, I use it some. I try not to get recordings with a lot of hum in it, but when you do, it's really handy. And I find that the new one in Isotope RX works really well. Um, this is one that they have. Let's see here. Let's go to adaptive mode. Let me show you here. I don't have, well, I actually showed this in, um, actually go back to, if you're interested in dehumming, I did cover that in my video on my main YouTube channel today. So if you go to Curtis Judd, um, we used one that was specifically in, actually it's a, it's a lot like Dialog Isolate. In fact, the one that we showed was in Final Cut Pro. It's called Vi Voice Isolation. Um, it actually did a surprisingly good job with removing a very complex hum from some dialogue. Um, and yes, if you push it too far, it definitely starts to sound, it has a really kind of nasty artifacting that it does. It sounds metallic, as you say, it means it's time to back it off some, and some dehummers are not that great. So it really depends. The one in Isotope RX here has gotten so much better in the last two versions. So starting with RX nine, it got really, really good with its, with its dynamic, um, dehum, amazing, amazing results for sure. So you can definitely get some pretty good dehumming these days. And then here's the rest of Alan's thing. It releases how quickly you turn it back up after she leaves and Pri is how quickly you turn it. Up. I've also heard this as a meme for teenagers playing music and their mom coming in and telling them to turn it down and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, <laughs> I use live to mix. Uh, tape equal, equals hard drive for the TV talk show. Yeah, that makes sense for if it is live, that definitely makes sense to use a compressor on the way in. All right, here's uh, some commentary on sound speeds analogies. Thank you, Alan. Uh, we have DBX-286s on every LAV channel, channel and we have patch to a 131's SEQ. So, or 131's just EQ. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, did you open the secret package already? No, let's do that right now. This has the potential of being very embarrassing for me. I have no idea. Well, I do have an idea of what Alan sent over. This is the package here. It does say twist. Uh, let's see, twist and pull. Uh, let's see. Is this a test, Alan? Uh, that's not working. So we're gonna get a knife out and open it. <laughs> Anyone have any guesses? Go ahead and put in the chat if you guess if you think you can guess what this is. It is in a tube that looks like that. Let's see if you can guess. And of course, you can tell it's from someone in the TV and film industry because it's the ends are taped off with gaffer tape. <laughs> Good job, Alan. <laughs> okay, where is the knife? I have the knife here. Got a bit of a mess to clean up, but that's no problem. Okay, set that down. Taking the end cap off. Uh, well, there's a sticker. Good thing that Bandrew's not here. He would have 
crumpled this up already. Will it focus on that if I put it in front of my face? Sound advice from a pro sound guy, soundspeeds.us. Okay. Uh, first item in the package here. Keep that from tipping over. It's probably Zip Fizz, if I had a guess. <laughs> sure enough. Zip Fizz. What flavor did we get? Um, health energy, zero sugar. What's the um, orange? Whatever the orange flavor is, is what we got. But that's not all. There's more. Uh-oh. This tube got a little bit smashed on one end. I hope that didn't damage anything. I think there's more in here. A sticker. There's Bandrew. Uh, Bandrew, here's the sticker that he included. I know uh, you're probably feeling very jealous, envious at the very least. Um, but yes, there's a sticker in here. There's more in here. It's orange soda. Thank you. Okay. The orange is orange soda flavor. I think this is it. I knew it. I was right. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is not part of a thing that I experienced as a kid, but there is a, something called Garbage Pail Kids. Uh, not familiar with it, but I have my own right here called, and I, I am evidently Judd Cud, which sounds really awful and disgusting. But in our next uh, live stream, maybe I'll hang that up and put that on the wall just for you, Bandrew. I think. I think this started, it wasn't Bandrew that originally missaid my name, and that's how this all started. I think that may have been mispronounced my name, and that's how it all started. So, um, thanks so much. Now, um, my doctor says I'm not supposed to have caffeine. So, um, in any case, <laughs> is there anything in here? Uh, take it. Soundspeed says take it. Um, Bandrew says, take the zip fizz. Uh, I, um, I might have to do it in very tiny doses again. My doctor, uh, uh, anyway, um, we'll, we'll go into that more <laughs> some other time. Um, but anyway, thank you so much, Alan, for the poster. I'm touched, I'm deeply touched. Bandrew, thank you so much for mispronouncing my name so that we, that poster became a reality here. It's really delightful. Um, I missaid the name in a comment to Bandrew. That's what it was. It wasn't not Bandrew's fault at all. Um, yeah, Alan left a comment on my video and unknowingly called you Cud Judd. Bottoms up. <laughs> the Curtis Judd equivalent. A bless your heart. That's right. That's it. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you so much for coming by and nerding out with audio related things with me today. I really very much appreciate it. Um, get out there and make some really good sound this week, and we will we will uh, talk to you really soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.